Hello again from uh, Skip V6 Bravo Golf Tangle. This video is going to be of my dream project of building a good sized moon bounce dish. Uh, it actually started way before 2015, but the actual construction wasn't until the fall of, of 2015. I put years of thought into this project and I decided I would build the ribs out of one inch square aluminum tubing. And since they come in 10, 20 foot lengths, uh, cutting them in half would give me 10 foot per per side of each rib. I decided to use a focal distance of 0 .444 for this dish and with that uh, number I came up with the all the data I needed for the depth and uh, the building the template for the rib building. So it came to the day that I went out and I ordered in 700 feet of one inch square aluminum tubing. Since I needed such a large quantity, I was able to cut out the end supplier and go to the middleman and uh, buy the tubing for around a third of the price I would have normally had to pay for it. Before I started anything, I uh, took a electrical conduit bender and built some special rollers for it in order for the one inch square aluminum tubing to fit into and be able to slightly bend it and slide it back and forth. It was a bit of an experimentation. Next I built up the table that would form the jig for putting the ribs together. I had to do some design work because I wanted to have as many ribs as possible and uh, being one inch thick they would not all go to the center and I didn't want to have to cut any ends off so I had to build up a, a, a diagram for what the hub was going to look like and that way I could space out the ribs on the table template. Once the rib template was proven, metal tabs were bolted to the wood table for holding the pieces in place while welding it together. When I got two ribs tacked together, I clamped them to some angle iron that simulated the hub. I then ran a string tight across from tip to tip of the two ribs. Then from a calculation, I measured from the string down to the edge of the surface of the curvature at certain intervals to prove out that the parabola curve was correct. I could also see that I was going to need special spacers built to go between the hub and the top rib. It was at this point that I realized just how big this thing was going to be. So with the design of the rib proven, I spent the next two to three months cutting pieces, welding on the jig. Um, most of the time was spent going back and forth between the bender and the template to get the parabola curve just right. It was uh, time consuming and by the time I got them all done, uh, I was getting it down to a science. Then I took each rib and welded in all the cross members for all 24 of them. So with all the ribs done, the next part of the project was figuring out how to build a hub. I had done a lot of technical drawings for this part of it earlier and the original plan was to use two quarter inch steel plates 40 inches in diameter. Well, when I got them cut, uh, I threw that idea out because it was just way too heavy. So I decided to keep the lower quarter inch steel plate for the strength and started laying out where the holes are going to be drilled for the individual ribs. The spacing for each rib was, was built from pieces of two inch angle iron with a small steel plate welded on top. On top of this smaller steel plate, I used a quarter inch aluminum plating for the uh, top of the rib mount. Now things were really starting to get fun uh, getting the two ribs clamped onto the hub structure. Once again a string was pulled across from edge to edge of the two ribs and the depth was being measured to determine just how this thing was going to go together. Then a second set of ribs were clamped to the uh, hub and string pulled tight across and measured again. This is where I uh, started to get the idea just how big this was going to be. My uh, shop is only 24 feet wide and I only had a couple of feet on each side of, for space. So the cold Canadian winter had gone by and spring was here. The frame for the tower had been built about five years earlier and had been sitting outside all this time just waiting for a dish to get on top of it. The tower frame winchable mass had been assembled the year before and here I was doing a load test to see if the utility winch could handle it. So this is a test to just see how the hub and one rib was going to work with the tower that was built five years earlier. Everything looked pretty good. 
it proved with enough angle the uh, dish would clear the top of the tower when winched up and over. So finally it was time to start putting it together. I've been waiting a long time for this one. First thing I had to do was build some kind of support stand that would hold the hub while the uh, ribs were bolted to it. It was welded out of some scrap metal head laying around and uh, little support stands on it that the lower large steel plate of the, of the hub would bolt to it. I only had one place I could assemble this thing so that I could drag it out to the uh, permanent location later on. I had to clear a bunch of brush out of there and the uh, land wasn't all that level. So things had to be blocked up to make it level. So finally the big steel hub was bolted to the stand and then the uh, top plate, the aluminum plate, was uh, bolted to it. Finally the first two set of ribs were dragged out to the location and bolted to the hub. The lower rib leg was bolted to the steel plate but the top uh, tubing was just slid over the aluminum plate and held in location with two turnbuckles. A center vertical pipe on a stand is located on a hole in the middle of the aluminum plate. This vertical pipe is what's measuring the depth of the dish. Once again a string is pulled tight from the edge of the rib to the far rib and held tight with a weight hanging over the edge. With this string being held tight I adjust the turnbuckles back and forth to move the ribs back and forth to first off get them centered and then also adjust it so that the vertical pipe for the depth is just touching the string in the middle. Once the two ribs are situated so that they're perfectly centered and the depth is correct, the, an extra cross member is built and is placed from a truss gusseting point up to underneath the top aluminum plate of the hub. This extra cross member really makes the uh, whole assembly super strong. So the second set of ribs were hauled out and installed in the same manner. String uh, was placed across and adjusted with the same turnbuckles for the depth using the vertical pipe and centered. Uh, at this point it's uh, fairly easy to get to the center of the hub to bolt things into. So time marches on and uh, more and more ribs are being installed. These pictures here show us uh, in roughly about half of what the uh, total is installed here. Uh, the total being 24 ribs. As more ribs are installed, uh, tougher it starts to get to uh, get to the center of the hub. I was uh, fairly bruised to reach inside and get the inner bolts on the top plate. So at this point we're down to four sets of ribs. In one picture there you can see the custom spacers that had to be shaped to fit underneath the rib to the plate near the edge. A top view from my tower showing only four ribs left. Okay we're at two sets of ribs left and you can see how it's getting tighter and tighter to get to the center. It's getting tight with one rib set left to go. Finally, the last sets of ribs were installed and it was all done. All 24 ribs have been trued and bolted in secure. Uh, it was brutal getting to the center of this thing to get the last set of bolts tightened up. And uh, I left the bits of flesh here and there to prove it. Again, another view from high up on the tower looking down on top of this part of the project. Next the depth measuring pole was removed and a center cover was built to replace it. It was made of perforated metal and flipped upside down fit perfectly in the center. To finish off filling in the center of the hub, pie shaped pieces of that perforating metal would be cut and then be held up in place with uh, small spacers just at the right height. These pie shaped pieces were cut to fit in between the ribs and were simply held by the two, two threaded bolts and the spacers, not at all by the uh, flat piece of aluminum holding the ribs down. These support rings that go between the ribs at different radiuses were a nightmare to build and get installed. The outer ring was the first one to be installed. 
all these rings were made from one inch by eighth inch aluminum strapping. The end of each rib had a special holder that this ring strap would slide into and uh, the ribs could be moved back and forth to get them all equally distanced. This was the nightmare, was uh, trying to get each rib spaced equally. I would move them just, you know, a fraction of an inch. And uh, as you went around, it came back to where you started, you'd be two inches out. It was uh, back and forth, back and forth, and it just took me forever by the time I got things done and bolted in. Next was the inner ring. These inner rings had to fit in between each rib and, and not go out past the edge. They also had to be at a certain angle, which required them to have special brackets made to uh, fit on the rib itself. It took a little back and forth experimenting to get this angle of the flat strap so it's so it would uh, sit upright and, and curve around the dish itself and then finally weld it to all these individual square brackets. It was uh, It was interesting. This ring was built in three different sections and then taken out to the dish and installed, uh, carefully placed and measured, and uh, eventually uh, spliced all together and, and finally done. Very time consuming. The next set of rings to build had their own issues. Being that the radius of the dish was getting larger now for these rings, the uh, diameter or circumference of these next set of rings was even larger. Even if these rings were made in sections, just getting them out to the dish itself in its length was a, t was a chore because these little square brackets, they just kept wanting to bend apart. These ring brackets didn't slide onto the ribs easily either. A special clamp was made to press them onto the rib. And then on the underside was a hole where I drilled a hole and used a single rivet to fasten the ring to the rib. So in between installing these rings, the uh, mounts for the feed arms were also installed. The feed arms themselves were made out of uh, one inch electrical conduit, which I had to extend. And then at the ends, there were special brackets made for the uh, top mount to hook to. The square frame at the end was just a bracket to hold the arms together. It had nothing to do at all with the actual feed mount. Before the mesh work was done, I installed the uh, tower frame into the ground and things like that, but uh, we'll get into this mesh work first. So I made large paper pie templates on the ribs and took them back into the shop to uh, cut the mesh with. This hardware mesh uh, came off the roll not very flat. It was uh, terrible stuff to get it uh, literally flat and even on the dish. Each pie shaped piece of mesh was laid down flat and overlapped on top of each other on on top of the ribs and held down with rivets at certain intervals. The rivets alone wasn't enough to hold the mesh down on the ribs flat though. Using aluminum MIG wire, I cut pieces and shaped them into different forms to wrap through the screen around the ribs to hold everything down flat. There's approximately 850 rivets and 1900 aluminum ties to finally get the mesh completely strapped down to the dish ribs. So the rest of the mesh was put on, cut off, and strapped down. The stuff was terrible. It was uh, awful hard in the fingers, too. There's lots of blood left behind. This work was actually done before the mesh work because I was concerned if I would get all this finished before the upcoming winter. I didn't want the dish sitting upright full of snow all winter. I built four large footings out of pipe, approximately six to seven feet long, with large bolts on the top and uh, wings at the bottom to sit in the cement. These four footings were lowered into the holes and then held together with a jig and cement poured in to uh, keep them in place. The new tower frame structure was rolled out over to location. With my very handy Jeep crane, I uh, winched onto the tower frame and raised it up into the vertical position. I made shims out of quarter inch steel that would fit between the footings in the tower structure. These were used for leveling the tower and then eventually the whole structure was bolted down tight. So more of the tower structure frame and assembly was put together, the uh, mast that's going to be winched up and down with a dish on it. The electrical enclosures, junction boxes, proximity switches and uh, encoder systems were also hooked up. 
There was a lot more prep work done, but uh, finally it was ready to get the dish installed. The finished dish and its mounting stand weighed in the area of 400 pounds. The challenge here is how do we lift it off the ground up onto the mount. So this is what I came up with. By using a, a long extension ladder in two pieces, I made a ramp that would slide the dish up on top of these pallets, which were all screwed together. The tower frame has a small utility winch to pull it up the ramp. So next the dish was unbolted from its assembly stand and lifted over to the mount, more like dragged over to the mount. It's unfortunate the video quality uh, didn't turn out very good though. Even with the assembly stand disconnected now, this sucker is heavy. Finally, the dish was bolted to the new mount. The elevation actuator was connected and the dish was tilted at a certain angle to clear the tower and a big lift began. The dish is being lifted by the winch on front of the Jeep with a 4 to 1 uh, pulley ratio. What happened when the dish weight shifted forward suddenly and it hammered into the dish frame? It was undue force on the uh, pillow block bearings on the elevation actuator. This is a picture of the elevation actuator after the oops incident. The loud hammering bang at the end pretty well destroyed the pillow block bearing. Luckily it didn't give out until uh, quite a few minutes later and it had already lowered the dish so it didn't do too much damage. The one dish rib had hit the top of the tower frame, but what stopped it all was the main center truss there had uh, hammered up against the chain sprocket. It didn't do any damage to the dish at all, it just cracked the welding there a little bit, so it's easy to repair. It was also after we got the dish up that I knew the counterweight system I had built wasn't going to work. So the whole dish was lowered back to the ground, and the dish re removed from the mount and put back on the pallets and the uh, whole counterweight system was rebuilt. So after all the repair work, the dish was winched back up into the tower frame. A lesson was learned. Next was to get the counterweights installed. These following videos are uh, snippets of much longer movies I had taken when installing the counterweights.
These cylindrical counterweights are old frack pump pistons, solid steel and weigh about 85 pounds each. I don't know, that's pretty heavy from here, Skip. My back's hurting watching you. You know, you know what we could do? We could take that 12-foot step ladder and go out and hang something on the feed horn. Not yet. The elevation actuator was rebuilt with a large thrust bearing instead of the pillow block bearing and that was all that was really left to install on the dish. This big actuator is quite heavy itself and with the uh, help of lots of friends and the elevator it was installed. So it took ex exactly one year from start to finish from when I started building the dish itself to having it fully installed here second time around. This is the crew that helped me out the uh, second time around. Uh, there were others. I couldn't have done it without them. Well, this video got a little longer than I was hoping. Um, this pretty well wraps it up for the construction of this uh, EME dish. Since the installation of the dish in 2016, a lot of uh, things have changed, improvements, uh, mainly the big slew gear for the Azimuth Drive here in the year of 2021. It's a lot of fun and uh, there are still improvements to be done, I am sure. So thanks for looking and uh, 73's from V6 Bravo Golf Tangle.